Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the program agenda. I'm your host, Sita Beltran, thanking you for joining us today, Monday, December 5, 2022. And kung medyo hindi nyo naiisip, 20 days na lang, Christmas Day na po. Okay, so uh, let's all be excited. If you haven't put up the Christmas tree like me, I think we better start looking for where we stored or hid the Christmas tree. Kami kasi dito sa bahay medyo lagi kaming atrasado. Anyway, as I said, it's a Monday. And thank you for those of you who are subscribers of Signal TV. Maraming salamat po. Viewers of One News on Channels 8 and 250. And of course, those who regularly watch Agenda. Today, we're going to have a double feature. Parang panahon ng ba, mga nanay at tatay nyo na merong uh, dalawang pelikula. <clears throat> double feature for interviews today. First, we will be doing our part to uh, bring to your attention the World AIDS Day. Okay, nag-celebrate po kasi ng World AIDS Day last week, but unfortunately, uh, we are a bit delayed in featuring the subject matter. But nonetheless, it's an important topic, so let's talk about AIDS, HIV, stigma, and the state of affairs on AIDS in the Philippines because apparently, in spite of COVID, in spite of lockdowns, mukhang tumataas pa rin ang number of cases year on year. Okay, then after that, we will feature an expert. He's a regular here on the program. Uh, he was a former government official, pero mamaya ko na po ikikwento, uh, to teach us, to give us a professorial lecture on the Maharlika, okay, sovereign fund, o kaya itong pinag Awayan, uh, this proposal of uh, Congress to put up a sovereign fund. Ano ba yung Maharlika sovereign fund na yan? Is the Philippines in a position to do so? I cannot comment because quite honestly, it is so confusing, it is bewildering, and medyo katakataka. And for many, kaduda duda. So let's educate ourselves and find out what exactly the sovereign fund is all about. But first, let's go to our daily starter. It's a good reminder as we go into Christmas, as we end the, the year with uh, the last month of December, baka yung iba sa inyo, you are thinking that, hey, you know, I survived the year. I did good. It was all because of my hard work, my effort my vision, etc., my leadership, at the book. Deuteronomy chapter 8, 18. But you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you power to get wealth, that He may establish His covenant, which He swore to your fathers, as it is today. I just want to emphasize that as uh, many of us go through uh, the motions of running businesses, uh, building bis uh, companies, making money, earning a living, uh, and you might start thinking, ang galing ko, you know, you might start thinking, I did it all my way, ika nga ni Frank Sinatra, but it is God who gives you the wealth and you know that covenant with your fathers. Let's be reminded, if it weren't for our parents, our grandparents, we wouldn't be around. If it weren't for the sacrifices of those who were ahead of us, those who taught us, those who believed in us, even your children, your wife, and especially your God, you wouldn't be where you are. So do that. Do not forget, okay? Uh, you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you well. Let's now go to the front page of the Philippine Star. And the headline is, 
Senate sets probe on vaccination, procurement, and wastage. <laughs> Medyo iba na usapan. Because the World Bank and the ADB and the DOH, as part of their uh, loan process for vaccines, has requested in keeping with the arrangement that a special audit be done. Sinasabing special audit kasi for that special or for that particular purpose. It is not a special audit because there is suspicion. It is special audit because it is not normal processes of the COA. It is special because of the special circumstance. Now, the problem here is now it's beginning to stink political because ayan na po yung wastage na. Kasi medyo, ayan na, pag-uusapan na yung wastage dyan, pag-wastage na kung ano-ano na yung lalabas yan. So anyway, the Senate sets probe on vax procurement. In the first place, why does the Senate have to do it? It's the COA's job. The Senate's job is to pass laws. Ay, si C.A. 1.0. At the top of the front page, government kicks off three-day bakunahang bayan today. For those of you who have not been vaccinated, have been resisting the vaccine, please don't wait for kingdom come to come soon, okay? Please get yourself vaccinated. Libre na, ah, pinapatagal pa ninyo. Ah, okay, so it starts today and it will go on for three days. Meanwhile. Catholic devotees adorn images of the Virgin Mary with flowers during the 41st Intramuros Grand Marian Procession in Manila yesterday. In the meantime, various labor groups have united and are filing today a formal petition. Oops, now hulia tayong ating, ano, ating uh, image. Uh, workers to file wage hike petition uh, to seek a 100 peso per day wage increase for workers nationwide. Ayan po. <clears throat> In the past kasi, it has been appeal, pakiusap, rally, demonstration, okay, uh, pa, press release. Now, formal na. Okay, the Different groups are filing the 100 peso wage hike petition and I have a sneaky suspicion it's going to pass because there is no turning back with food inflation, with all these gasoline prices, etc. Paghandaan nyo na po yan. So medyo yung mga maraming uh, tao uh, sa opisina or sa bahay, medyo siguraduin yung you can afford to have all of those people. Meanwhile, that photo in the center of the Philippine star, President Marcos and First Lady President Bongbong Marcos. Mabuti na yung malinaw. Bongbong Marcos and First Lady Lisa Araneta Marcos leads the launch of a nationwide gift-giving program at Malacanang yesterday. Kasi tradisyon na yan. Uh, even during the time of uh, Ferdinand Marcos Sr., I remember that they would invite people to Malacanang to give Christmas gifts. Okay. Meanwhile, photo to the uh, left bottom part of the Philippine star. Vistaland, the country's leading integrated property developer and largest home builder, has launched two of the Vista Estates Master plan in North Luzon. Ayan po. Uh, elements, the essence of exquisite living. E sana lahat, sana all ng Pilipino, pwede sa mga ganyang projects. Hindi yung pang upper class lang kasi uh, marami pa rin walang bahay. And Okta uh, declares that 12.3% nationwide positivity rate for COVID-19. Okay, so uh, expected uh, 1,000 to 1,200 new cases today, okay, and in the coming days. So, yun po, no? Meanwhile, 
Maharlika Fund. Yan yung pag-uusapan natin kay- mamaya. Okay? Maharlika Fund must hurdle legislative mill according to the House uh, Executive, uh, a key member of the House of Representatives has uh, tried to calm down uh, <laughs> public fears and said that uh, that the Maharlika bill must undergo the process in the uh, Congress according to Joey Salceda. Eh, <clears throat> okay, <laughs> maraming must go through the mill. Pero yung mill, railroad, patay patay. Okay, Kaap, the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines Kaap and its for, uh, 42 commercial operating airports in the country are ready for the holiday rush, going on high alert in anticipation of the increase in passenger volume during Christmas and New Year holidays. So, ayan po, <clears throat> pinaghandaan na po, ready, set, go na sila. Pag may aberya, tawag lang kayo sa media para magkaalaman kung talagang totoo ba itong pinagsasabi ng kaap. Okay. And last but not the least, a photo of former DI, DI, uh, DTI Secretary Mon Lopez with uh, okay with uh, college uh, ano ito? Ah, college battles in partnership with Tri Motors announces its grand champion Farm to Metro CEO Angelica Del Carmen. From the PUP or Polytechnic of the University of the Philippines in Santo Tomas, Batangas. Del Carmen stands with the competition's panel of judges, etc., etc. Ayan, kasama si Raul J. Manglapos III and Phil Star Media Group, EVP Lucien D. Choco at the Atrium of Robinson's Metro East. Okay, so ayan po. Medyo pasensya na kayo, finas break ko yung balita today because we have a double feature on the program. Anyway, let's now roll out our video uh, to introduce our first guest for today to discuss the state of AIDS in celebration or I don't know, say celebrate, uh, it really depends on your perspective, but basically to recognize that uh, the world is uh, commemorating the presence of AIDS, AIDS Day. Uh, let's roll the video. Dr. John Dio Miguel de la Cruz is the Chief of Medicine at Love Yourself, an organization focused on awareness, testing, and treatment of HIV. He initially joined Love Yourself as a volunteer counselor, life coach, and medical provider. De La Cruz finished his medicine studies at the University of Santo Tomas. Okay, good morning, Dr. De La Cruz. Welcome to the program agenda. Hello, good morning. Tito. Hi, everyone. Okay, thank you for joining us today. And as I already said earlier in the program, we are joining the celebration of World AIDS Day. And I have been uh, viewing a number of uh, videos, TED Talks regarding the state of AIDS. And the impression I got is that instead of the number of infections going down, it seems to have increased. And uh, many experts are saying that there is an even greater amount or uh, range of ignorance regarding the disease and worse, the stigma that goes with it. Uh, what is the situation in the Philippines, doctor? Um, so, Chito, currently the Philippines, uh, we're still in the top seven with the highest or increasing incidence rates uh, worldwide. Um, sad to say, no, um, totoo, yung lack of awareness or yung, um, as you mentioned, ignorance or lack of education in terms of the basic about HIV. I think that also comes again uh, with the lack of our uh, education for sexual health in general. No? So, kaya very crucial or very important yung sex education uh, to be introduced as early as, let's say, sa grade school pa lang. No? Um, 
with that lack of awareness or education, um, syempre, wala rin tayong knowledge or awareness in terms of access. So, sa Philippines currently, no, um, based on sa recent na HIV, AIDS, and antiretroviral treatment registry of the Philippines, mm-hmm. uh, as of September 2022, we have a daily reported case of 42 newly diagnosed uh, persons living with HIV. Mm-hmm. Um, compared to last year, 34, despite the pandemic or the COVID, no, we're still, we still have that epidemic of HIV cases uh, here in the country. Um, challenge yung mga last uh, two years because um, with the COVID uh, pandemic, there was limitation in access in terms of testing. No? Uh, yeah. Since karamihan din naman ng ating mga um, local LGU sa yung ating mga local health units also responded for COVID. So na shift or somehow na divert yung mga human resources tsaka yung mga facilities to focus on COVID. So, malaki yung impact ng COVID. Kaya kung titignan natin pa rin sa ating ano, current uh, numbers, um, somehow, nababawi natin within uh, this year, simula na nag-ease yung lockdown sa yung mga uh, quarantine, community quarantines, we are able to um, provide access for testing and treatment, no, especially for those na mga nasa uh, NCR. Yeah, D- doctor. But what what is uh, the primary reason? Because you know, people will say, you know, yeah, people are not practicing safe sex. Other people are, as you pointed out, there is lack of resources or information being distributed. Regarding HIV, it has taken the backseat to COVID. Uh, but is it principally because many people live in denial or don't want to talk about it? Not that you know they're you know they're scared, but parang you know it's such an unpleasant, uh, ugly, dirty thing to talk about. I, I'm just quoting you know all the things that have I've heard said about HIV. Uh, is that the problem that because people don't want to talk about it, so it's not really a social concern? Well, maliban dun sa stigma, no? as you mentioned, people are afraid or um, fear about knowing their status. Uh, partly, mm-hmm. people don't even talk about sex in general. No? Um, sa mga pasyente or mga kliyente na nakikita ko, na meet ko every day, mm-hmm. uh, even for those who are just undergoing testing, no? Um, I ask them if they do inquire or talk about um, getting tested with their sexual partners or even with their uh, husbands or wives. These kind of these kinds of conversation are not tackled, no. In even yung sa between magasawa, no, mm-hmm. hindi siya napapag-usapan. So bakit hindi siya napapag-usapan? One, dahil nga yung uh, we perceive sex in general as taboo. So anything na pag-usapan na related sa sex hindi pag-uusapan, ikahihiya, no? So, mm-hmm. merong shame in terms of discussing sex. So, kung hindi natin madidiscuss yung sex, paano natin i-discuss yung sexual health, which involves getting tested for HIV, other STIs, getting access to protections, preventive measures such as condoms, PrEP, pre-exposure prophylaxis, and then, kung hindi natin mapapag-usapan yun, how can we even discuss about treatment for those who will be diagnosed with HIV? So, I think, yes, malaking part doon yung lack of education, no? Na ako, hindi ko maalala nung ako bata ako, kailan ako nag-start magkaroon ng sex education. Mm-hmm. Um, it's more of dun sa aking medical um, school ko na siya natutunan, mostly. Mm-hmm. So, what more pa kaya dun sa ating, uh, like let's say, sa public schools, no? Um, so, malaking impact yung sa education, no? Multisectoral naman din talaga, no? Uh, yung issues revolving HIV kasi aside from the lack of awareness yung stigma mm-hmm. you know? so yeah yung, uh, this is the stigma still a big thing kasi uh, you know in general sa lipunan natin uh, and and uh, I, please uh, don't get me wrong ladies and gentlemen I'm just quoting the statistics uh, most of the data presented here who uh, among 12,859 cases of uh, 
from January to October 2022, uh, 93% were males who reported having sex with a male. Now, I don't know if it is uh, correct or appropriate to say uh, that, you know, these are among gay or homosexual individuals. But I find it ironic that in the Philippines, parang largely tanggap natin ang, ang uh, gay people. Uh, they hold prominent positions. Uh, they, they hold influential positions. And yet, the irony is, while they, there is a public acceptance of gay people, uh, parang no one wants to talk about AIDS uh, in the in the sector. Mm. So as you mentioned, yung males having sex with males. Um, in terms of HIV transmission, ang key risk would be yung unprotected sexual activity, mm-hmm. regardless of the person's gender or sexuality. No, mm-hmm. so kung titingnan, yes, highest or mataas yung porcento ng mga kalalakihan na nada-diagnose and karamihan nga sa mga numerong ito or sa mga taong ito are engaging in uh, same-sex or uh, heteros- uh, homosexual activities. No? Yeah. However, um, pati nga yung usaping... I, I, don't want, I don't want to make it a gender or, or you know, lifestyle issue, Doc, no? But uh, as, a, as a communicator uh, and you as a physician, you, we both uh, practice targeted uh, treatment, di ba? Kung baga, kami, targeted communication, kayo targeted treatment. But we th- uh, I've noticed that in the communication of gay or of a gay, of HIV, parang ini spread out, imbis na targeted, no, it is uh, not gender specific, it is not this, it is not that. Pero the statistics say male to male, 93%. Uh, many of them have confirmed that they're homosexual lifestyle. So wouldn't it be better to just focus on one group now? Hey guys, we have a problem in our community. Mm-hmm. Can we be the starters or the campaigners so that after you know we become vigilant in this community, the other uh, groups will then pick up on it? Because para ngayon, no one uh, feels you know, that they have to do something about it. So, as you mentioned, no, we do focus on key populations at risk. So, yung key populations at risk na meron tayo sa Philippines would be MSMs, males having sex with males, mm-hmm. transgender women because of the lack of healthcare in general for transgender people. Mm-hmm. And then we also targeted yung young population. Kasi dun mm-hmm. sa numbers natin, no, uh, kung titingnan, around 50% nasa age group na 25 to 34. Mm-hmm. Age group pa lang natin titingnan, wala, wag na natin gawing issue yung gender. Age group pa lang, 25 to 34 years old. Mm-hmm. And 31% of the newly diagnosed are around 15 to 24. So kung hindi natin gagawin, uh, hindi na natin titingnan yung sa gender, but titingnan natin yung sa lifestyle. No? Maaga nang na-expose ang ating kabataan in terms of sex, no? Internet yeah. is very accessible. Hookup sites are very accessible even through Facebook, no? May mga nakakapag-meet for their hookups through Facebook. So, yeah, we do target yung ating uh, programs for this key population at risk. Um, among MSMs naman, yes, um, for the community, we started, Love Yourself has started since 2011, and we initiated our programs targeting MSMs, gay men, mm-hmm. And then eventually, as we go along, no, um, nage expand din yung aming mga programs. So we develop transgender health programs to further uh, increase yung HIV mm-hmm. access ng mga transgender people, not just for women, but also for transgender men. Don't, and then. Yeah, so go ahead. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, so, and then we cater yung ating mga key populations at risk in terms of yung mga, since ang age group nasa 25 to 34. We partner with private sectors, with the business sector, wherein we roll out yung sa uh, HIV policies in the workplace, no? wherein we encourage testing, we promote awareness, not just during December and June. No? Mm-hmm. Kadalasan ng mga private sectors during June at saka December lang naaalala ang HIV because dahil World AIDS Day or mm-hmm. dahil Pride Month. But 
wala naman nakalagay sa mga policies na to na dapat doon lang sa mga araw na yon okay. na promote ito. Okay, so what should we be doing given, okay, now December we are uh, promoting uh, HIV, uh, AIDS uh, Awareness uh, Month. What should the public in the Philippines know? Because parang, ah, uh, hindi na problema yan. Uh, ano na yan, may gamot na yan, may may inum ka ng gamot everyday para hindi ka mamatay, etc. But what should Filipinos be told as far as AIDS and HIV is concerned? Hmm. Now, it doesn't matter who you are no, or ano yung background mo. It's what we do that puts us at risk. So, dapat malaman ng kada Pilipino no, na available ang testing for free nationwide. Available ang treatment for free as well nationwide. It's okay, just no pero sa pool ka na yan. Pag sinabi mo yan, sa pool na yan, meron ka na. But before pa, di ba? Kasi uh, you were saying practice safe sex. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think many people don't realize that they have to because uh, uh, I I know of some people, yung hepa B ba? Uh, mm-hmm. Merong mga tao dyan na nagka-hepa B, hindi nila alam na you can also get it from sex. Uh, I got it from a blood transfusion, but I found out from my doctor that other patients get it from uh, unprotected sex. So mm-hmm. so you get uh, HEPA B, you get HIV or AIDS, etc. So uh, why is it a challenge in the Philippines to promote the use of condom or safe sex? Uh, maliban sa condom, meron pa bang ibang means? Yes. So, dapat rin malaman ng mga tao no, na hindi lamang condoms ang option natin for prevention. No? So, I've mentioned important malaman ang testing because here, we are already promoting yung status neutral approach. Hindi lang mm-hmm. natin tinatarget yung persons living with HIV. So, mm-hmm. we want everyone to get tested para malaman yung status. Kung malaman ah. nila na sila ay positive, oh. they'll access treatment. Kasi yeah, because nung, because nung pumutok ang AIDS sa Western world, mm-hmm. naging part of dating yan. Parang nung kalat na kalat, when HIV broke out uh, or AIDS became so widespread, mm-hmm. when people got, before people got very mutual and physical with a boyfriend or a girlfriend, they would say, let's get an AIDS test first, diba? if we're going to get serious about this. So that was one. Same with parang COVID now. Uh, when you get invited to a party, those who are really careful will ask you, could you please do an antigen swab before you show up? Para mm-hmm. lang sure ka that you don't have COVID and it is a practice for everyone else going to the party to make sure nobody gets infected. So, so... What we do for COVID now he, is what people have been promoting for HIV. Before mm-hmm. you get physical, before we start going, let's get physical, let's get tested. Yes, but okay. uh, we have to recall that HIV testing has to be voluntary. Uh, hindi siya pwedeng compulsory or mandatory. Na kailangan bukal sa loob ng tao makipa, uh, na magpapatest na siya mm-hmm. ay mag-undergo the test itself. no So, hindi ito pwedeng i-enforce or i- yun nga, i-mamandato natin na dapat magpatest. Yeah, we but, the, but doc, oh, you, oh. you were saying, Doc, earlier that, you know, you encourage employers to have HIV testing in, in their companies, okay. uh, make it available. Yes. Uh, it's that's, part of the policies of the uh, DOLE, no? Now we're in HIV policy in the workplace. Ang goal nito is to increase awareness by promoting yung information and make testing available. Pero they're not mandated to make it mandatory. So they make mm. the testing available, so they do roll out parang uh, mass testing. Kung sinong willing mag-undergo ng testing, then on the same day, they can proceed with the testing. So they invite us to do the talks like this one. Uh, we mm-hmm. promote HIV 101, options about prevention like PrEP. Uh, we discuss like yung iba nag invite pa for STI, no? Kasi nga, walang basic knowledge for STI, sexual health. Mm-hmm. Um, so sinasabay namin yung, we offer testing. Uh, so we bring kids. Uh, kung willing din yung company or yung kanyang employees to undergo the test, at least the test is available on the spot. But 
it is not enforced or hindi siya yung mandatory even by okay. private so what else should we be telling our viewers regarding uh, AIDS and HIV because uh, okay uh, 93% of those who tested positive male to male mm -hmm. pero meron ding uh, heterosexual merong male yes. to female mm -hmm. uh, meron ding uh, medical uh, related uh, infection risk exposure yeah, so, no. in regards to HIV, it's highly preventable. You just need to get tested. Kasi nga, pag nalaman yung status, whether that's positive or negative, for the positive, they can access treatment. The treatment will work as a preventive measure. By controlling yung viral load ng infection, uh, once na determine natin na undetectable yung kanyang viral load, that also means untransmissible yung infection. So that will prevent yung spread by people infected, no? On the other end, kailangan natin din mapatest yung mga negative for them to access prevention. So kung malaman na negative ang status, it's good to know that there is PrEP or yung pre-exposure prophylaxis. It's a medication that one can take prior exposure, no? So that will prevent yung acquisition or yung acquiring the infection. So Meron na nun? Yes po, since 2018 pa. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Let's go for a break. Let's go for a quick break and tell us all about that because uh, na, interesting eh. Parang sa pregnancy, hindi ba? You can take the pill or you can take the morning after pill. Eh, ngayon, iba na pala. Okay, we'll go for a quick break. When we return, we'll continue our discussion in uh, recognition of World AIDS Day. Okay, uh, thank you for uh, joining us again. Welcome back to the program agenda. And uh, for at, at, in this part of the program, we are talking about AIDS and HIV with Dr. Migs uh, de la Cruz, uh, Jan Dio de la Cruz, uh, Chief of Medicine at the Love Yourself Incorporated. And uh, we are also, of course, uh, doing our part for World AIDS Day, which happens in uh, or World AIDS Month in December. Okay, now, uh, Doc, Doc uh, Mix, let me just uh, let me read uh, the the data for our viewers. Uh, in uh, January to October 2022, there were 12,859 reported. Uh, HIV cases, 11,157 or 93% were males who reported having sex with a male, 8,518 or 71% male with uh, male only, uh, 2,639, 22% male with male and female, and 82 of them, 1% were infected through sharing of infected needles, while 32 cases 
were uh, mother to child transmission, etc. Now, uh, as of October this year, total of 1,383 individuals were confirmed to have HIV positive uh, infections. Okay, and the United States recently donated 85 million uh, pesos in HIV viral load, load testing cartridges to strengthen the Philippines HIV treatment program. Okay, now, Dr. Miggs, you were saying that you could actually uh, first get tested so that before you do any intimate act with someone, you know whether or not that person is uh, AIDS-free. And for me, as sinasabi ko nga, if you have people tested, malaman mo kung meron ding ibang uh, trans, uh, you know, uh, ang tawag yun, transmittable diseases like uh, hepatitis A, B, and C. Okay, now, uh, but you were saying that you could take a pill uh, in case you just want to be sure you can take a pill before having sex with someone and you won't get AIDS? Yes. So if we do have treatment or medications for those living with HIV, we do also offer pre-exposure prophylaxis or PrEP. So it's basically a combination of antiretroviral or antiviral medications that the person has to take regularly. There's daily intake, which renders 99% uh, effective uh, treatment to prevent HIV. No? Um, since 2017, we rolled out PrEP demonstration here in the Philippines, and we've been providing uh, PrEP not just for MSM, but also there are women who are accessing PrEP as well. No? Um, so yes, uh, this is offered free uh, in most of our clinics. Um, there are private providers as well, wherein they can buy the bottle. Um, and as long as na monitor no yung status, um, they can access prep or they can refill for prep. And the purpose of prep is it is an added layer of protection aside from condom use because prep can only prevent HIV. For the other STIs or sexually transmitted infections such as Hepa B, syphilis, gonorrhea, chlamydia, herpes, and the list goes on, um, condoms is still effective not to prevent. But we offer prep even for those who are consistently using condoms in cases of a condom break or in cases of stealthing. No, may ibang tao nagtatanggal ng condom without the other person's consent. So with prep. It's basically an added layer of protection, especially for HIV prevention. And then okay. yeah. we also have PEP, post-exposure prophylaxis. But currently in the Philippines, it's more used as a not a, for occupational exposures, meaning yung mga healthcare providers na natusok ng karayong, mm -hmm. na splash ng dugo while doing surgeries. Um, so we do offer occupational PEP. Uh, but for Love Yourself, we also offer non-occupational PEP. So in cases of, let's say, yung sexual harassment or sexual assault rape, no? uh, especially if high risk, meaning merong mga anal, vaginal, or even oral penetration and yung exchange of body fluids uh, that would put them at high risk of HIV acquisition. Yeah, so, because uh, it's good you mentioned that, doctor, because <clears throat> akala ng tao, it's all about sex. Sometimes it's uh, criminally related. Yes. You can be a victim. Uh, you can have be, you may have been assaulted, etc. Mm -hmm. So all of these medical uh, remedies or solutions or, or uh, intervention uh, apply not just for people with... Uh, uh, who, uh, you know, who enjoy sex or have a lifestyle, but for victims as well. Yes. Uh, so ideally, PEP has to be started within 72 hours of exposure. So mm -hmm. in terms of yung mga sa rape, um, unfortunately, karamihan ng rape nagre -report, uh, reporting are delayed, no? Mm -hmm. um, but among men, or yung currently sa mga nawi-witness namin, no? or yung mga cases na handle ko, um, meron na silang awareness. Madali lang naman yun, Google Mote. So, nag-Google search sila saan accessible ang PEP and even PrEP. And then for those na nag-access ng PEP, we do continue them on PrEP no, to prevent a, uh, any future exposure. No? 
Mm-hmm. Meron ding iba, ginagamit yung PEP as a morning after pill, which I don't highly recommend. No? Um, again, prevention is always better than cure or treatment. So, we do encourage people to access PrEP dahil yung side effects din ng PEP, no? Iba yung regimen ng PEP and PrEP. So, mas mabigat yung side effect profi- profile ng PEP regimen na available sa Pilipinas. What, what about those people na sinasabi, eh, may gamot naman eh. Parang, parang may mga diabetes. Yeah, walang problema yan. May gamot naman, di ba? Oh. May, may kung ano-ano. And then, ayun, sex. Eh, may gamot naman. But, but, is it sustainable? Is it affordable? Or, kasi as you said, prevention, uh, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. What yeah. about for AIDS and HIV? How expensive is the situation? Definitely, no, mas ayaw natin magkasakit. No? Kahit anong sakit pa yan, kahit manageable, curable yan. No? As much as possible, ayaw natin magkasakit. Uh, but, Kung magkasakit man, no? so roughly ang gagastasin ang ng isang taong ni HIV kung simple lang yung kanyang uh, condition, let's say stage 1, stage 2 lang siya, no? walang complications. Ang isang bote ng gamot would be around, sa Pilipinas yung na-access natin would be around um, 1,000 to 1,500 per bottle yon. Imagine you'll have to take one bottle per month, no? one tablet daily for the rest of your lives, hanggang wala pang cure. So, just imagine, kung sa ngayon, no, uh, the medicines are provided by the government for free. No? Uh, yeah. We do have funding, uh, support from international uh, bodies, organizations who are helping these treatment, these commodities to be accessible to us. So, mm-hmm. pati yung regimen. Kung mas complicated yung regimen, dahil let's say, may mga opportunistic infection, yeah, that was AIDS. going to be my next question, Doc Mix. So, no? because yung, yung AIDS, no? Basically, um, mas magastos. Kasi aside from the HIV treatment, they'll have to be treated as well for those opportunistic infections, which would range about 35, uh, 30 to 35,000 on a monthly basis, depending sa mga ginagamot. Um, yeah. yeah, but Doc Mix, uh, what about, okay, kasi uh, I noticed the celebrities or personalities worldwide who are the uh, poster image for a survivor okay for survivors no they're physically fit i mean mga ano mga athletes mostly people who are constantly in the gym even in their old age and mm-hmm. and i was wondering uh, if you are AIDS, HIV positive, and uh, you take this medicine that you're talking about, uh, is that just part of the recipe? I mean, do you have to be physical, physically fit? Kailangan mo bang mag-gym kalagi? Or else, if your health goes down, you're dead? So basically, in primary care, no? Even without HIV, lahat ng tao dapat nag-exercise. Kasi eventually, mm-hmm. when we age, nagbabago yung metabolism natin, which put us at a higher risk for developing hypertension, diabetes, obesity, and more met- and other metabolic disorders. Mm-hmm. So for people living with HIV, since alam na nila yung status nila, they are more conscious on how to um, uphold yung kanilang health in general, not just for the HIV. So sila, mas nagiging, kasi aware sila yung side effect ng gamot, lalo na kung iinamin to on the long run, may effect to sa ating liver, sa kidney. Such as? Such as um, fatty ris- uh, yung fat redistribution. So nagbabago yung fat metabolism for people using a certain type of regimen ng HIV mm-hmm. treatment. May mm-hmm. iba naman na nakarely sa magandang kidney function or magandang kidney status yung kombinasyon nila. So for them to maintain na maganda yung kidney function nila, kailangan maganda yung control ng blood pressure, wala silang diabetes, maganda yung kanilang nutrition or yung kanilang diet, hindi sila mahilig sa mga alat. No? Mm-hmm. So lahat ito for people living with HIV or even for people who are regularly getting tested, kahit negative sila, sa so nakikita ko, they are more health conscious. So, what, is the, what, what is the prognosis or lifespan uh, of an infected individual. Because uh, I remember uh, back in the late 90s, nag interview na ako ng mga HIV-positive individuals. In fact, 
people were shocked uh, that I would have an HIV positive person in the studio. I would shake hand with them or hug mm-hmm. them. And I said, you know, if you know this disease, you know how to deal with it. But uh, I kind of wonder kung buhay pa sila, uh, what is the uh, prognosis or potential of an HIV patient? Well, definitely buhay na buhay sila as long as they keep themselves on treatment and they regularly monitor yung kanilang status. So part naman ng ating HIV treatment package sa Philippines is not just providing them with treatment or yung tableta, but mm-hmm. part din doon yung regular monitoring nila, yung annual tests for their viral load, annual mm-hmm. tests for their lipid profile or cholesterol levels, screening for diabetes, preventive measures such as vaccinations. So ang lifespan, technically, walang difference na with someone na walang sakit or may high blood. I think better pa nga yung lifespan ng mga taong living with HIV compared sa mga taong may hypertension na poorly controlled. Kasi pag sa sa hypertension and diabetes, kahit mag-maintenance sila, they can only slow down yung progression ng disease, not exactly halting it. Unlike with HIV treatment, no, it will prevent yung progression ng disease while halting yung activity ng virus. Therefore, hindi maapektuhan further yung immune system. So for people living with HIV, definitely ang life expectancy nila, makukumpleto nila kung anong inilaan sa kanila ng Diyos. Kumbaga. Ang sinasabi ko nga, no, hindi naman sila mamamatay ng dahil sa HIV. Ang ito mamatay nila is kung hindi nila gagamutin yun agad. So yung complications of HIV. So before, like you've mentioned way back in 80s, no, ang um, life expectancy for people living with HIV, especially na-diagnosed na during their AIDS stage, ang um, life expectancy is around 2 to 5 years from the diagnosis mm-hmm. or shorter, depending sa complications. Mm-hmm. But now, um, the goal here is to get tested as soon as possible para habang nasa acute phase pala ng infection, mas start ng treatment para maiwasan yung complications. No complications, then better yung life expectancy. Sinasabi ko nga, no? Mabubuhay naman, laging tanong din sa akin yan sa klinik ng mga pasyente, Dok, mabubuhay pa ba ako? Dok, mamamatay ba ako? Ang sagot ko lang, as long as iniinom mo yung gamot at hindi ka mabagsakan ng buko paglabas mo dito, <laughs> mabubuhay ka. Kasi yung chances mo na masagasaan, mabagsakan ng buko, or let's say, mabangungot, nandun pa din. So, kung particularly for HIV alone, at least kontrolado nila yon. That's something they can take control of, and not HIV take control of their lives. No? Yeah, I, li- I like that analogy because uh, sa lipa, eh, marami akong puno ng nyog yes. at lagi ako umiiwas sa mga puno at sabi ko, delikado, mabagsakan tayo ng palapa dito. Yes. But uh, what about women? What about women who uh, in the late, you know, uh, midlife, uh, they want to have children, mm-hmm. they have HIV uh, for one reason or another. What are what are the chances that a woman with HIV can still have uh, carry on with a with a pregnancy and have a normal HIV free child? Ano ba yan? Cesarian pa rin ba labanan dyan? Uh, uh, Some people I remember in the 80s, early 90s, parang sinasabi kung may HIV ka magpa-abortion ka na uh, kawawa ang bata, etc. So for women living with HIV, no, uh, currently a lot of OBGYNs are already promoting HIV testing sa kanilang mga pregnant mothers. No? Okay. So once na malaman na person, uh, mother living with HIV, maaga ma-starta ng treatment, even nagbuntis na siya or nagbubuntis na siya, that would already, ang goal kasi mapabagsak agad yung viral load. Nang sa gayon, mm-hmm. it will prevent yung transmission ng mother to child. In terms of delivery, um, so before, ang recommendation was cesarean, no? Kasi parang bloodless delivery or limit yung blood exposure, vaginal fluid exposure to the baby. Yeah. However, recent developments na rin in terms of, sa, I'm not an OBGYN, but I do have patients na nagbuntis. Um, yung iba sa kanila, nag-normal vaginal delivery. Uh, as long as yung mother is undetectable, mm-hmm. and then the baby ay nailuwal ng healthy, may option pang mabigyan yung baby ng post-exposure prophylaxis as an added precaution. Mm-hmm. No? But in terms of transmission ng mother to child, that is highly preventable. 
No, unfortunately sa Philippines nga hindi pa natin na achieve na mag zero mother to child transmission na tayo like our neighbor in Thailand, no. Sila zero na sila in terms of mother to child. Tayo meron pa din. So, pa- paano nila nagagawa yun sa Thailand? Ah, definitely yung access to treatment, no, and testing, mas pinalawak, pinaigting. Malaking mm-hmm. bagay yung political will kasi in terms of sa healthcare nila, as I witness, no. Uh, very engaged yung kanilang uh, yung prinsesa nila no yung princess nila yung nagpromote ng prep uh, very engaged yung kanilang um, government sector in terms of healthcare so kung ganun ka engaged din yung sa atin no in any healthcare program i think ma-achieve naman din natin yung mga gusto nating makamit na zero transmission control the epidemic and HIV prevent na rin yung pandemic ng covid enhance vaccination drives so health is very political no so mm-hmm. kaya yung mga ganitong bagay ma-achieve natin siya kung may malaking um, political support or yun nga yung mga okay. policies no in place Okay, well, uh, Doc Migs, uh, I think you have given us a truckload of information. I, some I didn't even know myself, like yung, uh, you know, the night before and the night after or the day after, etc. Uh, but at least I hope it helps our, some of our viewers. And uh, I appreciate the fact that at the end of the day, prevention is better than cure. Faithfulness is better than panic. And uh, we thank you, Doc Migs, for for dedicating much of your work to helping people with HIV, uh, helping people avoid HIV. God bless you, Doc Migs, and uh, have a good day. Thank you for having me. Have a good day. Okay, that's uh, Doc Migs uh, de la Cruz. He is the Chief of Medicine at Love Yourself Incorporated giving us tips on uh, HIV and AIDS as we uh, celebrate AIDS World World AIDS Day. Let's go for a quick break and let's find out ano ba itong sobrang fanere. Okay, we'll be right back here on Agenda. Welcome back to the program agenda. Gab, let's roll out our introduction for our next guest. Ernesto Pernia was the social economic planning chief under the Duterte administration. He is also a writer and a professor emeritus at the UP School of Economics. Pernia previously worked at Asian Development Bank. He was also a consultant for the World Bank the United Nations Center for Regional Development, and the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, among others. Secretary Professor Pernia, good morning, sir. Good morning, Sito. Uh, Senor Sito Beltran. <laughs> okay, sir, uh, because uh, we don't have a lot of time, yes. I will give the floor to you. Could you do us the big favor of just explaining to us what is this Maharlika Sovereign Fund? What is a sovereign fund? Do we need it or don't we need it? 
Uh, well, we need it if, if we have the uh, investable funds, meaning funds that uh, we can spare to invest in something. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, Norway, uh, they have the North Sea oil and uh, Singapore has, uh, you know, extra money, uh, you know, spare money to invest. And uh, several, other, even China has uh, sovereign wealth funds. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, let me let me talk start with the big picture for the Philippines. You know the, the Philippines has really fallen to the bottom of the ASEAN countries. If if we, we if we take out uh, Laos, Myanmar, and Cambodia, we are at the bottom. We mm -hmm. used to be at the top. We used to be at the top in the uh, 60s, 70s, and uh, early 80s. But then uh, we were we 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 discontinued our population program, and so the 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 population ballooned. And in the meantime, the economy was not able to was not uh, capable, uh, was not large enough to uh, satisfy the needs of uh, so many Filipinos. So, in uh, in other countries, they sustain their population uh, management program family planning, and so they were able to manage the size of their population uh, consonant with the, with the capability of the economy. Mm -hmm. So that, that is the thing. And so among ASEAN countries, it's only Indonesia, uh, no, no, uh, Singapore, because Singapore is a sui generis country. It's a special case. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's really a city state, not a country. And then uh, you have uh, Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Indonesia has a lot, a lot of resources. They have oil. They have uh, palm oil. They have, uh, you know, the regular oil. Uh, you know, because uh, Indonesia is a, spans a, a huge uh, land area. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, they have, uh, you know, it's not, not uh, like uh, Norway. They have oil. So they have funds from oil to invest in this uh, sovereign wealth fund. Okay. But other countries like Malaysia, they tried to because they also have uh, they also they are richer than the Philippines, but there was this uh, corruption. Uh, Najib Najib uh, dipped into who was the prime minister then dipped into the uh, sovereign wealth fund of Malaysia. Mm -hmm. So that that really fell fell out, and in fact, Najib has been uh, imprisoned. Uh, Ra Rasak na Najib Rasak. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, I, 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 in the Philippines, uh, we are hard up. We have a huge uh, fiscal deficit. Uh, 63 three, uh, percent of GDP is uh, is uh, our is a debt. Yeah, we, dedicated to paying loans and debts. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And our the, our uh, budget deficit is also quite high, about uh, eight percent. I think eight percent. It should it, we should really keep it at three percent, but it's it has also ballooned to, I think six eight percent, and probably it's now down to around six point five percent. So we're spending much more than we're earning. That's we, correct. We have borrowed so much money, yeah. and we don't have resources or uh, any means by which uh, we would have been able to save enough money or an excess fund. Kumbaga, uh, you're saying. Sovereign funds are essentially excess funds. Sobrang pera o yaman ng isang bansa. Yes. If, if, we, have, if we have oil, for example, if we have malampaya, I think malampaya was uh, the funds from malampaya could have been, could, could, uh, could go to a sovereign wealth fund, but uh, we uh, squandered the malampaya, malampaya fund. Yeah. So we really don't have spare funds. For it to invest, mm -hmm. and uh, what the government is trying to do now is to get money from SSS, GSIS, from Land Bank, from DBP, from DBP and uh, yeah, Land Bank, DBP, and SSS, GSIS, and also some something from the budget about 20, 23 billion, uh, 25 billion. 
Yeah, so, but to to what end, uh, Secretary Pernia? Because uh, you know we can all discuss about where to get the money, but the question is, bakit ba ang kulit ng mga nasa Congress or ng mga politiko to put up the sovereign fund? I mean, I, I'm trying to figure out what do they imagine is the good that will come from putting up the Maharlika sovereign fund? Yeah. Well, uh, the, the the idea is if we have this uh, sovereign wealth fund, then it will grow over time uh, because it's going to be uh, uh, it's going to be invested in several uh, you know global global uh, uh, funds mm-hmm. and it will grow. Like uh, uh, for example, Norway, they were able to uh, rake in about. More than one 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 trillion uh, Norwegian dollars uh, mm. at one time, but then during the COVID nineteen, I think in nineteen twenty uh, twenty two this year, they lost about one hundred seventy three uh, billion pesos. They 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 gained something like uh, more than uh, uh, more than one one hundred seventy billion. Uh, b- earlier, but then they lost it also because of the COVID. Uh, no. So, pa- so parang nag-invest lang sila sa stock market. Yes, yes, yeah. The investing in not not just in the local stock market, but yeah. in uh, uh, whatever it, uh, you know good investment uh, possibilities there are in the world. Ayon. Okay. So they 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 the authors of the Maharlika Sovereign Fund wants to get all of the trust fund and the bud part of the, the national budget, create a fund that will ultimately be used as capital to invest in other investment opportunities. And the best example that everybody has been talking about is uh, what country was that again? Was it Nor- Norway? Norway, Norway. Norway uh, that made money and lost money. Well, they made money. Uh, they made more than they lost, actually. Okay, but they had excess money they had to begin money. with. Yeah, because they have a North Sea oil. Mm-hmm. Like Indonesia has uh, oil also. Siguro. Okay, yes. siguro. Pasensya ka na, Sek Pernia. I, I will have to invite you back uh, when we have uh, more time. We've run out of time, but uh, uh, now we have a clearer picture thanks to your examples and your explanation. But uh, at least uh, we will be following up on this because uh, it is scary. Uh, what's your personal opinion? Should we or shouldn't we? Well, as I said, uh, we are the poorest in ASEAN right now, uh, if you, we take out Myanmar, Cambodia, yeah. and Laos, yeah. we're the poorest among the seven seven ASEAN countries because uh, you know because of what I mentioned earlier, and so we are not really in the position to be venturing into this kind of a, a wealth fund and uh, sovereign wealth fund. Investment. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Secretary Pernia, and uh, I hope that you will accommodate me when we call back on you uh, for a longer interview. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Don Suitable Fran. <laughs> thank, thank you very much, <laughs> Professor. Okay. okay, that's former NEDA Secretary Pernia, and uh, at least uh, I hope some of you have a clear understanding <laughs> of this. And sabi nga nila, wala kang kapital, mangungutang ka pa para magkapital, eh, yeah. lagaring hapon ng wallet yon. Okay, let's go for walang our final... Spare, walang spare money, walang spare funds. So, why, why do you want to go into that? By uh, scrounging money from SSS, GSIS, Land Bank, you know? These are, yeah. these are, uh, uh, these are the pensions of uh, private and public uh, officials, you know? Okay. So Thank you, sir. Thank okay. you very much. Uh, sorry, uh, we're just going to have to cut out now. Uh, okay, and let's go with our uh, blessing reminder for the week. It comes from Melody BT. Gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. Let us be grateful for what we have. 
be thankful for what we have. And I thank you for being with us today here on Agenda. Have a great day. Keep it here on One News. Thank you.